Well, I took a break for a little while in order to kind of catch up on some classic who, but now let's continue with my Doctor Who ranking, and now we're up to Tier 4. Now, while the first three tiers are obviously going to be the best of the best episodes, the Tier 4 is pretty much the, the boundaries of the OK, going from OK to good episodes. And this particular branch of the list will cover numbers 40 to 52. So, off we go. And number 52, The End of the World, I, the second episode of Series 1 from 2005. It's a little depressing, given that it's all about death, but hey, it's something we've all got to face, and hey, for the first game proper adventure with Christopher Eccleston, and after we've been introduced to him, first one, yeah, it's a pretty good episode, it's got a pretty decent villain, and you know what, it holds up pretty well. Number 51... The Curse of the Black Spots, i.e. the third episode of Series 6. This this one I was surprised to find had Hugh Bonneville in it. Like, I knew of Hugh Bonneville, I knew he was a big name actor, but then I saw that his name was in the episode and I was like, yeah, yeah, so he was. Yeah, that's pretty cool. Number 50, Planet of the Ood, the third episode of Series 4. Well, I think Series 4 has a lot of great episodes. Planet of the Ood, I admit it's pretty good. I don't know if it's classified as great, but it's a nice reintroduction to the Ood. Gives us a good sequel, tells us a bit more about them, and ultimately does fairly well. Number 49, one of my guilty pleasures, I'll admit, The Unicorn and the Wasp, i.e. the seventh episode of Series 4. I admit, it's one of my guilty pleasures. It's my guilty pleasure choice for Series 4, but that doesn't necessarily mean that it's the best of the best. I mean, once again, the cast do a phenomenal job. David Tennant and Catherine Tate are great as ever. Fenella Wilgar pulls off a brilliant performance. And the cast, sport and cast all do their great job well in portraying the time period. But it ends up here at 49. At number 48, we have a two-parter. The Girl Who Died and The Woman Who Lived, i.e. the fifth and sixth episodes of series nine. I'll admit, I have mixed feelings on this one. I, I like uh, Maisie Williams' portrayal in The Girl Who Died, but from The One Who Lived Onwards, I'm not entirely certain about each one. I mean, you can find the Shilder episodes and me episodes scattered throughout my list. I It might have just been a fan that, the fact that I'm not the biggest fan of Game of Thrones. I tried it, it's just not my cup of tea. But... For the first two episodes, she does fairly well, and this is a decent, decent story. I, I do prefer part one more than part two, but that's just me. And number 47, Let's Kill Hitler, the eighth episode of series six. Once again, a, a pretty after a break of a couple of months in order to appeal more to the American audiences, now Doctor Who is back for the second half of series six, and yeah, well, this one's just funny. I mean... Hitler's only in it for about 10 minutes, if that, but it, it's still a funny episode. I mean, I, while I personally wasn't that much a fan of the overarching story of Series 6, this one was pretty fun. Number 46, Flatline, I, the ninth episode of Series 8. Most of this episode is just okay. I, if you watch it through on its own, it'll probably just be an okay episode. But the final speech with Peter Capaldi, that's what elevates it above above a lot of things. I mean, his speech to the boneless, and then Clara tossing him a screwdriver, that's what elevates it high above the rest. So, n number 46 is Flatline. Number 45, we go one episode before Flatline to Mummy on the Orient Express, i.e. the eighth episode of Series 8. This was one that people always said was their favourite, or that they considered the best of Series 8, and for a while I didn't really see why. Looking back though, it is an enjoyable episode, it's got a nice kind of murder mystery style vibe to it, but, you know what, it, I, while I personally don't think it's the best, I, I do think it's an honourable mention for Series 8. And maybe I'll have to rewatch it again just to see if I can in, capture some more of the enjoyment that everyone else does. For number 44, we've got another two-parter, The Magician's Apprentice and The Witch's Familiar, i.e. the first two episodes of Series 9. 
This was another one that was on my guilty pleasures list, and I do love it. I mean, they do once again bring back Davros, who hadn't been seen since series four. You got Davros in there. You got the Master, I Missy at this time. You got a load of classic era Daleks, and I think this one succeeded where I felt Asylum of the Daleks fell flat in bringing back classic Dalek designs. And when you see them pop up in The Magician's Apprentice, that was when I felt that moment of pure nostalgia. But, yeah, it is a little bit wonky around the edges, but, you know what, I still love it. Number 43, returning back to Series 6, A Good Man Goes to War. The seventh episode of Series 6. If they had to split up Doctor Who kind of partway through the year, I think they'd choose a fairly good story to go out on. I mean, it builds and builds and builds and builds, and then suddenly there's that moment, and they certainly ended on a good cliffhanger. And while I said I'm not the biggest fan of Series 6's overarching plot, they managed to provide a fairly shocking moment towards the end. I mean, you could maybe say you saw it coming, but you know what? It's still a good one. And number 42, we've got a three-parter. I, the 6th, 7th and 8th episodes of series 10, Extremis, The Pyramid at the End of the World, and The Lie of the Land. I was hesitant about this storyline when I heard about it, I mean, especially when they said it was going to involve stuff like the Vatican and the Pope. I was like, oh god, oh dear. But in fairness, looking back on it, it's not actually that bad. I mean, I was hesitant about it, but it does provide a solid story. I don't know if it's my favourite, but yeah. I mean, they managed to create a world where everything's a lie. And even though they made it work, they made it scary. You know what? The monks, they do have a kind of sinister edge to them. But they end up here at my number 42. And number 41, we've got another two-parter. The 8th and ninth episodes of Series 4, Silence of the Library and Forest of the Dead. Now, personally, before he took over the show, I personally think this is the weakest of... Stephen Moffat's episodes before he took over. Uh, you've got uh, em Empty Child, Blink, Girl in the Fireplace, and this. I personally say this is on the weaker sides, but it's still a very good episode and a very good story. And it introduced us to River Song. What more can you want? And rounding out Tier 4, before we head into Tier 3, is number 40, and I've got The Christmas Invasion. Looking back, it is still one of the better Doctor Who Christmas specials, and I do love it. For our first introduction to David Tennant, properly in an episode, and he certainly came in with a bang. I mean, I still think this is one of the better Christmas specials. When compared to all the other episodes, it maybe slips down a couple of places, but it's at the top of my Tier 4, and with that, we finish Tier 4. Next up, we'll moving on to Tier 3. I don't know when I'll get around to doing it, but... When I do, I'll let you know, and then you'll start to see some really great episodes making the list. Anyway, until then, I'm Ozzy.